If you do like these tank chats, do please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. We're going to have a look now at the Saladin, FV601 it was in the, uh, the old days. We're going right back to the beginning though. For a start, having said Saladin, you, you'll automatically think of Alvis. This isn't an Alvis vehicle, it's one of the few built by Crossley, but we'll come to that in a moment. The whole idea of Saladin was, uh, oh, it was completely novel post-war. They'd drawn up a whole load of drawings of armoured cars and lightly tracked vehicles while they tried to make up their minds which one it was. But uh, as with all these things, loads of ideas get pushed to the surface and none of them seem to materialise. This vehicle appeared, first of all, as a, um, an armoured vehicle, but with a turret mounting a two-pounder gun, which was known as Pipsqueak. It was built in mock-up fashion, full size. We'll put a picture of that in later. And um, otherwise, it had the same, basically the same chassis as this. The only real difference between the Saladin as you see it and Pipsqueak was that Pipsqueak had a three-man turret. They could afford that with the two pounder gun for a start. And this meant that they had a man who was equipped to drive in reverse. He slid down into a seat and drove backwards. Now they couldn't have him in later versions, I'll explain why in a minute. So Pipsqueak with the reverse driving position was absolutely unique in that respect. It's worth looking at, but no more. It did never exist in, the re in real life. They do say, that Britain took the inspiration for this vehicle from the M38, which we knew as the Wolfhound, which was a six-wheeled armoured car built in America. And certainly it was six-wheeled, and certainly it had these triangular sort of bins between each pair of wheels to stow things in. But otherwise, the two vehicles are totally different. Different engine, different transmission, different suspension. There was no connection at all, except that they were six-wheelers. And quite honestly, if you produce a six-wheeler, this is what you end up with, whether you like it or not. That's the way they were built. Now, the idea was to give the project to Alvis of Coventry. And they were produced in fairly large numbers, or at least meant to be. But Alvis, having produced two prototypes, were immediately pulled out to operate a... Um, a version of the, this thing called the Saracen, which is actually an armoured personnel carrier. It was quite similar, but had the engine at the front end instead of the back. And because they were called in to do this in a hurry, because we needed the Saracen for operations in Malaya, the Saladin was pushed to the side. At first, it looked as if it was going to be cancelled or at least delayed. But then Crosley Motors took it over. Now, Crosley Motors, in the old days, before the Second World War at least, was a big company. They produced cars, buses, trucks, military vehicles, half-tracks, or oh, a whole host of things. A um, couple of armoured cars we've got here. And um, they were a big firm based in Manchester in those days. They'd been famous during the First World War for their Royal Flying Corps vehicles and had supported the RAF and the... Uh, the army ever since. But by well, when this thing was built, late 40s, early 50s, they'd fallen on hard times. Crosley had become part of the ACV group, which was meant to be a sort of collective of commercial vehicle producers. And they took over this thing and they really saw the Saladin as a lifeline. It was going to boost their um, sales and make them a famous company again and they really looked forward to it. Now, this didn't work. Although Alvis had been pulled aside to build the Saracen, they built them very quickly. And by the time they built them, only six of these armoured cars had been built by Crosley. And this is one of the six. It's probably the only one left, and therefore quite a famous vehicle. So we can always tell them apart by the number plate. These things have civilian number plates, the others, the Alvis built ones, normally have the two digits, two letters, two digits, a military serial. 
The other difference is the turret. It's somewhat longer on this vehicle than on the Alvis, but not enough to worry about. And you can't see it anyway, so I won't worry about it. But you need to see the top to see the difference. But it's basically the same. So the Crosley and the Alvis armoured cars are pretty well the same to look at. They're powered by a Rolls-Royce B80 engine, which is an eight-cylinder petrol engine. It's mounted in the back, in this case, in the rear of the vehicle. It drives through a five-speed pre-selector gearbox and with an auxiliary box that means that you can drive the thing in either direction. That's five speeds pre-selected by the driver, and he drives it just like you would a Daimler Dingo or something like that, and um, has power-assisted steering. The only thing is the driver's got the steering wheel the other way round to normal. Instead of being like this, as you'd normally hold a wheel, it's like that to sort of mix in with the slope of the front of the armour of the vehicle. But the Saladin in this form, whether by Elvis or by, or, or by Crosley, is a, a three-man vehicle. It has a driver, a tank commander, and a loader, and that's all. They, cut, they had to do away with the third man in the turret because they wanted a decent gun for this thing. The two-pounder was, oh, it's really had its day. It was a pre-war weapon anyway. Even with new ammunition, it wasn't really up to it. So they were they decided to get this vehicle fitted with a new gun. Now, there's nothing in the world that's disliked in Britain more than a new gun. You'll normally find they're trying to make that gun up out of um, an old one or two or three old ones or the better bits of them. But they had to produce a new gun and they produced a short barreled rifled 76 millimeter gun for this vehicle, which is actually quite effective. It's um, mounted, as you can see, at the front and gives the vehicle quite a punch. It fires Hesh or high explosive. Hesh is squash head ammunition, which is an anti-tank round, but you'd, you'd have to get pretty close to a tank to do it serious damage, and I wouldn't advise that in a vehicle like this. The armour thickness is fairly thin. It's about 16 millimetres on the sides, reduced to about 12 millimetres on the front but it's made thicker by the fact that the armour on the front sloping, which is supposed to give it more of a, de a defensive quality. But 16 mil is about the best, except on the turret front, where I think it's 32 mil, and, but then 16 all the way round elsewhere. So it's easily clobbered if it isn't moving. If it is moving, it's a different matter, of course. But that's the basic vehicle. It's, as I say, given it's got a good power unit, Rolls-Royce, it's a military engine, the B80, and it pushes this thing along at about 50 miles an hour when it's going flat out. It steers on all four of the front wheels. All six are driven, but the four front wheels are all steered, hydraulically assisted, from the steering wheel or the driver's steering wheel in the cab. So it's well controlled. The only thing is, the only problem with it is, it has one single differential. And that differential acts between the wheels on the left-hand side and those on the right-hand side. Now, that's OK across country because it's, there's a fair amount of give and take ground and some soft ground that the wheels can sort themselves out on. But on the road, it's different. You get quite a lot of wind-up in the suspension or in the transmission between the left side and the right side. And the only way to ease this was to pull over onto the edge of the road for a while and raise one set of wheels up onto the pavement and thus it, it gives it a chance to sort itself out. It's just a question of remembering to do it. Otherwise you've got hub reduction gears on all wheels. All the wheel stations are more or less the same otherwise. In fact, they're interchangeable, but only the back set is fixed. The rest is... To, they have torsion bars working the suspension on the wheels, torsion bars running horizontally, rather than crosswise, so they go fore and aft, and they give the wheels a bit of suspension. They used to say that you could run one of these vehicles on any four after any two others had been blown off by mines. That's a load of rubbish. They have been known to work quite well with one wheel missing, say, 
the middle wheel on one side and the front wheel on the other side. But you've really got to select which of the two you blow off before they will blow off, before the vehicle falls over. That's the, um, the truth of the matter, but uh, that's what they used to say. They used to make a lot of claims like that, a load of rubbish, most of them still. It's, uh, it's quite a nice vehicle. It, it was a good looking vehicle. It lasted a long time, sold well on the export market. It really was a very popular vehicle in its day, but its day has now passed, unfortunately. It's gone on to other things. And the Saladin, although it, a few were produced with a 90mm gun later on, that all failed. The only versions of it I can think of, there was one amphibious version with a folding screen, which still survives. It's around somewhere, but uh, God knows where. The idea was you raise the floating screen and the thing went swimming, powered by its wheels, of course, so it went nowhere, really. And there was another version with two of swing fire missiles fitted to the sides of the turret. The idea was it would go out, find a tank and destroy it with a swing fire missile. But again, you've got to be very lucky to get a tank with a missile. And um, although it was built and the missiles were fitted, there's no account of them ever entering service like that. The Elvis was the production version. Crosley had really set their hearts on making a fortune out of this vehicle. Elvis resumed production the minute they'd finished production of the Saracens and from then on it became an Elvis vehicle from start to finish. So all the production vehicles that you see, uh, demonstrations, that kind of thing, are all Elvis built and all regular army vehicles, FV601C I think is the actual um, designation of them, to uh, distinguish them from the B series vehicles built by Crossley. But um, that's the only real difference. They're still powered by the same engine, have the same transmission, the same armament, whether they're Crosley built or Elvis built. But uh, quite an interesting vehicle all the same. In these difficult times, obviously your support is really valued. So please do keep following us on social media, do subscribe to our channel, and, and if you've got the opportunity, perhaps order something from our shop, uh, join one of our schemes like Patreon or our friends organisation, and we'll try and keep going with giving you some content to keep you informed and entertained.